Okay, can anybody answer this question? First of all, central banks. How can central banks manage expectations? Yes. What's the main tool they have? Increase the money supply. Increase the money supply. How? Printing money. Printing money is the second one. What's the first stage they're going to try before printing money? Increase the interest rate. Decrease the interest rate, right? So decrease the interest rate down to very low, right? Using the open market operation. And in some cases, print money and the central bank buys the government bonds. Okay? That's what we call printing money. It's easy to understand that way. Official name is QE. Quantitative easing. Do you understand quantitative? Yes. Sir. Quantitative means number or amount. But US people don't say the long way. They always use abbreviation. So you always say QE in the US, right? So QE, we're talking about QE is the central bank buying government bonds. Okay? or buying bank bonds, or bad loans from the bank, right? Buying up assets in the economy, okay? But mainly when we're talking about QE, they're talking about buying the government bonds. In Europe, they're doing this now. In Japan, they did it in the US and the UK, okay? And Japan is a very big program of QE. Debit or government debit is down? The government debt is going up. The government is lending money from the central bank. The government owes the money to the central bank. So it's a little bit like I take money out of this pocket and I put it into the other pocket. Okay? Is the government ever going to pay back the money to the central bank? No. Maybe, maybe not. If they did, what would the central bank do with the money? They'd have to destroy it. Okay? Government pays the money back to the central bank, they destroy the money. Decrease the money supply. Okay? Increase the money supply, turn on the machine, print a lot of money, give it to the government as a loan. Okay? The government pays interest to the central bank. Who gets the interest? What does the central bank do with the interest? Pays it back to the government, right? So that's what I mean, it's a little bit like lending yourself money, okay? This idea of QE. There's a 6% of the interest goes to some banks which are founding banks in the central bank, some private, including some private banks, they get some advantage. Also the people who sell the government bond at the auction are very happy. Where are you going to make more money, selling eggs or selling billions of dollars of government bonds? Which is going to be more profitable business? Are you sure? Yes. Why? So if I sell a billion dollars of US government bonds at the auction, what's my fee going to be? Even if my fee is zero 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 percent, one percent, I still might make a hundred thousand dollars for a day's work, right? So investment banking business can be quite profitable. Investment banks like Goldman Sachs, okay, JP Morgan. They are the people who organize the auction to sell the government debt. Are they happy when they hear about the QE program? Investment banks are happy or not happy when they hear about QE program? Yes, 
government is going to lend money, or the central bank is going to lend money to the government, right? I'm going to be in the middle collecting my fee, right? When at the auction. So, uh, do you want to work in an investment bank? Why not? I want industry. You want to work in industry, right? You want to earn a lot of money? You might want to work in an investment bank. Some of the highest salaries compared to the average, right? And has been growing over the last years, right? It's average salary in investment bank about 100,000 US dollars, right? Average salary in the economy about 40,000 US dollars, okay? So that's one of the reasons people are annoyed okay? with uh, about some of the banks. So you said the monetary policy, right? We do that, improve people's expectation. What about fiscal policy? How can fiscal policy affect people's expectations? Two ways. Spending more money, Keen's idea. How does that affect people's expectation? In the short term, this is in the short term. If the government spends more money, what happens? They hire more. Okay, hire more people, more money goes into the economy. <coughs> what about the opposite one? Cutting spending. What's the idea there? Is that short term or long term plan? Long -term. It's a long term plan. What's the advantage in the long term of cutting spending? Uh, government, debt government debt decreases, the interest rate is lower for the government to lend money. Okay? Any other advantage? Certainty. More certainty and stability in the economy. And we do down, downward pressure on wages. Okay? Uh, on prices, on everything, okay? Uh, if people in the government get paid very high salary, then house price might go up, right? But if people in the government don't get paid a high salary or don't, uh, government is not spending a lot of money, the house price can go down, right? Other prices can go down. Wages, if the house price goes up, is the person in the factory going to ask for a higher wage or not? House prices are going up. Are people in the factories going to ask for a higher wage? No. Uh, higher. Yes, they need. A, they can't afford to buy a house. They need a higher wage. Okay. They can't afford to rent. So, if we cut the spending, the pressure we are making lower wages, right? And stability. So, uh, we are helping to kill inflationary expectations, right? So, if you want to study more, you can read this document is in the readings, right? So, in this case, second case, people expect, don't expect higher wages, don't expect much inflation, can be more confidence in the economy. So, do you have any question about this part on oh, main idea of output and money and expectation? Government cut down the spending money? Yes. Our tax is down. If it doesn't, it, it's, we're talking mainly about spending here, right? But the government's, things can happen to the taxes, you're right. If the government spending go down, our tax income can go down too, right? Tax intake can go down in the short term. But their point is that our economy will get more competitive, and in the long term, it won't affect taxes too much, right? So, we're talk, we talk about fiscal surplus or deficit, spending minus taxes, right? Fiscal deficit, spending is higher than taxes. Fiscal, opposite is fiscal surplus. Surplus, in fiscal deficit, spending is higher. Okay? In fiscal surplus, taxes are higher. Okay? So... <coughs> Europe has actually made an agreement called the Fiscal Treaty a couple of years ago where countries agreed to keep their fiscal deficit to less than 
less than 1%, right? But there are some conditions. So the countries in crisis don't have to do that. And every country has a few years to do this, right? But Europe decided to make this program. American economists couldn't believe that the European countries agreed to this program, right? They said, what if they're, you know, sometimes government needs to spend more money, okay? So a different idea between American economists and I'm from Ireland, so Irish and UK economists tend to agree with, what do you think, German or US economists? Yes. US economists. We talk about Anglo-Saxon. Do you understand Anglo-Saxon? Yes. Anglo-Saxon is really including the UK, the US, Canada, Australia, English-speaking countries, right? They have similar culture, similar tradition, <coughs> similar legal system, similar language, okay? Similar ideas about corporate governance and many things. Okay? Mainland Europe, France, Germany, Italy, Spain, different legal system, right? Different thinking about uh, things. So also in, econ in economics, they have different ideas. So you, we can notice that's one problem with the UK these days, right? The UK doesn't agree with the way things are being done in Europe sometimes. So they're, they're going to have a referendum about staying in U the EU or leaving the EU. 2017. So Irish economists also, most of them agree with American economists, don't agree with the German economists. So uh, anyway, both of those are ideas or theories that that uh, <coughs> debate has been going on for a hundred years, right? Keynes used to have some uh, Hayek from the Austrian School of Economics used to debate with Keynes, right? Nowadays we have Hans Werner Sinn from Germany. He debates with some Paul Krugman or somebody else. So it's interesting to hear their debate. Okay. So I don't. If they can't figure out which one is better, then I don't expect you to tell me which one is better, right? in this class. Just you should understand the idea or the theory of both sets of economists. Okay? Uh, these days you can read the blog of the different economists very easily and the different views. So if I want to know about what is Paul Krugman's idea or what is Paul Krugman saying, he has a blog. Often they have a home page Okay, and they, if I just type Paul Krugman into Google, <coughs> here you can see him, right? He has a blog in the New York Times. Do you know the New York Times? Yes. Uh, he's, he, he, even this uh, article, he's talking exactly about that. So Paul Krugman spends a lot of his time talking about why the government needs to spend more money and why he's right, okay? And he writes a lot of uh, articles with some statistics trying to back up, right? So uh, he makes some, you know, growth, productivity, those kind of things. And he says that the US was correct to do what they did because the economy is going well. But he always said that Europe was wrong to do what they did, right? But some people will say to him, well, what about this country or what about that country worked, right? And then they'll have an argument or a discussion online. It can be interesting, right? <coughs> you can see this German guy. Does he look like he likes inflation? <laughs> If you look at him, do you think he likes inflation? Yes. Yes? No, he doesn't. This is a website where many of people put their opinions together. Project Syndicate. Okay? So this guy is professor of economics at the University of Munich and has some other titles, right? So he, you can read his articles here. Okay? Don't lend to your Euro friends. Okay? The game of the Greek, Europe's easy money end game. So he's talking about this, right? Easy money end game, right? He doesn't even agree with the central bank doing this. So he says that's going to be some problem. So 
If you click on the article, then you can read his ideas. Okay, it's a little bit heavy reading. Uh, do you understand heavy reading? Yes? Do you like heavy reading? <laughs> yes? But if you want to learn from the best economists in the world, if you look at this in the glass half full, positive way, when I was younger, we didn't have easy access to the best economists in the world, right? Well, nowadays you have easy access to the best economists in the world. So the internet can be your university, okay. too. Okay, you can learn by reading what these guys say and they think, right? Uh, if you read these kind of articles, it's very good practice for your English, right? Because if you listen to the international news or go to some conference, they're going to be using this kind of vocabulary the same type of vocabulary that these guys use. So even though the vocabulary is difficult, if you learn it, it's quite useful. So if you read these kind of things, then you meet somebody like that, you can understand what they're saying, you watch their video, you can understand what they're talking about, okay? Here he mentions QE. I do expect QE to bring about inflation, okay? So this is the kind of things we're talking about here. Okay, so he expects the QE in Europe is doing QE, it's going to cause inflation. So he's in the Austrian School of Economics. Who's going to be right? It's interesting to see, it's like a drama. Do you watch dramas? Yes. Yes, I read those things. Do you think I'm a nerd? <laughs> Instead of watching the drama on TV, I watch the drama between Hans Werner Sinn and Paul Krugman. <laughs> Something might happen next week, then they'll write an article, it's really exciting, I can't wait to see what will happen. Is that nerdy? Hmm? No? I think it's interesting. So if you guys also follow that kind of thing, you can uh, learn more about economics. Okay. Uh, So then, let's move on then. Does anybody have any more questions about the main idea of macroeconomics? No. I think also Project Syndicate, they translate some of the articles, but I'm not sure if they have Korean. They, some of the articles they might have translated to Korean. Uh, but that's one advantage of speaking English, right? Learning, studying through English, one advantage is you can uh, read those kind of articles from the top economists in the world through English. Okay? Uh, then let's talk about the accounting for countries. So we're going to talk about the balance of payments. So I mentioned before that we're using this book, uh, which is in the reading files, International Macroeconomics, right? These people made this uh, available on the internet. So here for reading for this part is Pounds of Payments page 1 to 4. Okay? So just you can, if you want, to study more about Pounds of Payments, you can read page 1 to 4. Okay? So then let's discuss. So what can we find in the balance of payments? We're going to discuss about the current account, capital account, reserves account, <coughs> excuse me, and balance of payments trends in major countries. So what is the balance of payments? It is the statistical record of a country's international transactions. We will find later in the US website, they call it international transactions. Do you understand international transactions? Yes. International transactions is clearer than balance of payments. Okay? What is a transaction? Yes, one person gives money to another person, right? Why do people make international transactions? Mm -hmm. To make money. What? Can you give me some examples of an international transaction? Yes, buying government bonds in another country. Anything else? 
<coughs> buy an iPhone from another country. Anything else? Invest. Invest in stocks in another country. Buy a house in another country. Okay, they're all international transactions. <coughs> so, over one year or one quarter, do you understand the quarter? What is a quarter? It's finance when we talk about one, one, one. Yes, one over four, right? So when is the first quarter, usually? It can be different in different countries, but usually, if we look at the 12-month calendar, when, when is the first quarter? January to March. Okay, so first quarter, January to March, right? And then so on. So if you watch business news there, a lot of things are results of the first quarter, the second quarter, okay? Companies result, profit, in the first quarter increase their profit, in the second quarter decrease their profit, okay? Why do they use that? It's too long to say January to March, June to August, all the time, okay? So usually companies report their profit together at the end of the first or second quarter, okay? Third quarter. So now we're in the third quarter, right? at the moment of the year. So that's a period of time, years or quarters, presented in the form of double entry bookkeeping. Do you understand double entry bookkeeping? Yes. We put a transaction in two sides. So it should equal zero. So let's have a look at an example. <laughs> Maplewood bicycle in Maplewood, US, imports $100,000 worth of bicycle frames. From me, Mercy and Bicycles in England. So, who is, which country is buying the bicycles? Which country is selling the bicycles? England. Okay. So there will exist a hundred thousand dollar credit recorded by uh, Mercy. Okay. Offsets a hundred thousand debit at Maplewood's bank account. So this is going to lead to a rise in the supply of dollars and the demand for British pounds. What does the US company need to buy the bicycles? What do they need to buy the bicycles? Bananas? Are they going to give the British company bananas? No. Get bicycles back? No? Money. What kind of money? Pounds. No, try again. Pounds, right? There, you, it could be that they make a contract, US dollars, but the British company wants pounds. Why does the British company want pounds? They pounds. They spend pounds in England, right? They have to pay their workers. What currency do they have to pay their workers in? British pounds. British pounds. What currency do they need to pay their British suppliers in? British pounds. What do they want? British pounds. So the American company has to buy British pounds. Do you understand? Yes. Yeah. So what, what are they going to use to buy the British pounds? Bananas? No. <laughs> Dollars. Dollars, right? They'll use dollars to buy British pounds. So in the market, the supply of dollars is higher. I'm selling dollars. More dollars in the market. Okay, but I'm demanding pounds. Okay? So there it's also going to increase the demand for British pounds. So which two we expect will get stronger and which will get weaker? Pound is more stronger. Pound is there's more demand for pounds, so pound will get stronger and less demand supply of dollars, the dollar will get weaker. If this was the only transaction in the world, right? So uh, the balance of pay, we already mentioned uh, this one, right? So the, cur the current account is, is uh, <coughs> exports of goods and services. You said the iPhone. iPhone is included in the current account, okay? What's a service? Give me an example of a service. Where is it, right? So, uh, you, you go to stay in the hotel in Disney World, that's going to be recorded in the here, right? It's a lot of numbers and statistics, but Disney present their accounts at the end of the year, so you can see. 
includes foreign aid. If the debits are greater than the credits, the country is running a trade deficit. So we have to get familiar with these words. Deficit, surplus. Okay, what's the meaning of deficit? Positive meaning or negative meaning? Negative. What's the meaning of surplus? Positive. Usually, right? So usually, what does surplus mean? If I have a surplus of milk, what does that mean? Right now, Europe has a surplus of milk because uh, one of the reasons is there's some trade embargo with Russia, right? Yeah. Russia is not buying European milk anymore. So Europe has a surplus of milk. They had a big demonstration last week, the French farmers in Germany. They were burning not real cows, but plastic cows <laughs> in front of the meeting, right? So Europe has a surplus of milk. What does that mean? Too much milk, right? More than we need. What does deficit mean? Less. Not enough. Not enough. Mm -hmm. Some people are iron, iron deficient. It means they don't have enough iron in their blood. Okay? So, trade deficit, what does that mean? Exports are higher or imports are higher? Imports. Trade surplus? Exports is higher. Okay? So, what about the capital account? You said buying a house or buying US government bonds or buying stocks, right? Is that buying goods and services? No. No, right? That's buying some asset. Do you understand asset? Yes. Right? I'm not going to consume that. Do you understand the difference between consuming? Yes. I'm not, I can consume a one night stay in a, in a hotel, I can consume a bicycle, right? But long term assets is put in the capital account. So the US has a capital account surplus, right? Do you think US people invest more in stocks in other countries or foreign people invest more in stocks in the US? For yes. Why? Because I'm investing safe. Yes. Safe? But I'm investing in. If I want to be safe, I'll invest in the government bonds. Maybe safe. I know what you mean, but safe might be the wrong word. Why do, do people invest in U.S. stocks? S and P 500, top 500 companies in the U.S. Why don't people invest in Somalian stock markets? I'm sorry to pick on Somalia again. I, I hope nobody is wa watches the video from Somalia. What? They don't return. They are stable. Profit. They are economic. They're not going to make a good profit, right? People want to make a good profit from their investment. If I want to make a good profit, maybe I'll invest in Amazon. Okay? I'm not going to invest in the tree maker in in Somalia, right? It might make a little bit of a profit, but Amazon is a global company and is leading in the online sales, right? Yes. So Amazon's stock price has gone up a lot over the last few years. They have some new product they're going to make, right? They're going to launch a new product. I think that the US company is quite, has good technology, good innovation, right? So I want to invest in the US. So a lot of foreign people invest in US stocks. Can you understand? Yes. Do you understand why they invest in US stocks? Do you want to invest in US stocks? Yes. Right? If you look at the top 10 companies in the world, biggest companies, how many of them are from the US? Seven. Right? The majority of them are from the US. Okay? Can you name them? Google, Apple, Apple, Apple Cisco, Google. Cisco, GA, GM, G, G, Johnson Johnson, Johnson, Johnson uh, Microsoft. Okay? And they are not just US companies, they're also global companies. Even though the US has a crisis, a company like Coca-Cola, it sells, it gets more than 50% of its revenue from around the world, right? So it can still be a good investment, okay? So the US has a la very large capital account surplus. People also like buying US government bonds, okay? So along with US borrowing from foreigners, this finances their trade deficit. This allows them pay for all the goods and services. Money is coming into the US, right? Investors are investing a lot of money in the US. Then this allows them to pay 
for goods and services. Okay? Does the US have a trade surplus or trade deficit? Does it export more or import more? Import more, right? Yes. So, <coughs> this capital account is composed of foreign direct investment, FDI, portfolio investment, and other investment. So, what does FDI mean? What does it mean? Can you give me an example of FDI? Buying, buying Korea GM company. Buying a field, buying land in, in the US, right? Yes. Giant company invest our factory, uh, construct our factory. Okay, so GM builds a new factory in Korea, they buy the land and they build a factory. Yes. Yes. What about if GM buys the stock in a Korean company? Let's say it buys 50% of the stock in the G in, uh, in a company, right? So they can also invest in this way. Okay. So portfolio investment, people investing in the stocks and the bonds, right? On a smaller way, smaller way than buying le not much, maybe less than ten percent of the company, right? <coughs> and other investments. Okay. Uh, <coughs> statistical discrepancy. It's a lot of data. We have to get all the data of all the goods and services. Right around the world. So we're going to make some mistakes. Okay? There's going to be some mistakes when we're recording transactions. So we just enter a figure to get things to balance. We're going to look at an exhibit which shows $18 billion was missing. Okay? We're just trying to make uh, official reserve account includes gold, foreign currencies, SDR, reserve positions. Official reserve account, if our current account is higher than our capital account or vice versa, we might either use our reserves or save our reserves. Okay? So if we get the idea in the US, US is probably a bad example because they're not managing the exchange rate. Right? But let's just say that they were. So say that we have the capital account, uh, let's call the financial account to make it easier, and current account. So financial account, people invest 800 billion in the US, okay? And then current account, US people just buy 400 billion of goods and services from the rest of the world. Okay, then how much is our reserve going to be? 400. Positive or negative? Negative. The US have more reserves or less reserves? People invested 800 billion in the US, they spent 400 billion on goods and services. Positive, right? They're going to have build up their reserves. Okay, if we have a negative, this is negative and this is negative, right? Then we can have a negative. We have to use our reserves. The country has to use up its reserves. So, <clears throat> this is a reserve account which is mainly used for important for countries who are doing peg exchange rate. For other countries, they're not really using uh, reserves. So the balance on the current account, balance on the capital account with a K, balance on the reserve account equals zero. Okay? Three is zero. This one is mainly for countries who are using managed exchange rate. Uh, under the flexible exchange rate, floating exchange rate, current account should be equal to the capital account. Okay? So let's have a look at the US balance of payments of 2006. Okay. Uh, here, current account. We can see exports, 2 billion. Imports, 2.8 billion. Other transfers like foreign aid or gifts, or some people transfer money back to their family, that kind of thing, right? Uh, total, minus 811 million. Capital account, direct investment, portfolio investment, very high, okay? Stocks and bonds, uh, other investments, also high, okay? And then U.S. people, this side is U.S. people making investments in other countries, so minus, okay? So the surplus is 826, and the negative is 811. So there's some statistical discrepancy, 18, okay? 
So the U.S. imported more than it exported, meaning it has a deficit. The U.S. attracted investment. Clearly, the rest of the world found the U.S. to be a good place to invest. Okay, so the numbers should balance each other out. In the real world, there is a statistical discrepancy. Okay, we don't uh, know. Do you have any question about this? Hmm? Uh, overall, don't worry about that. It should be zero. Just a very small number. So balance of payments on the exchange rate. So as US citizens import, they are supplying dollars to the forex market. We talked about the US company buying bicycles, importing from the UK, right? They're supplying dollars to the forex market. What's going to happen to the exchange rate? We increase the supply of dollars. Dollar price goes up or down? Down. down. So is it getting stronger or weaker? Then on the other hand, citizen, US citizens exports, other people demand dollars. What's happening to the dollar now? It's getting stronger, the opposite, okay? And however, on, we are going to have is going to be uh, balanced out by the, also by the investments. People want to buy stock in the US, they need US dollars. Okay, so Government-controlled investment funds are getting more important in international transactions and investments. They are called sovereign wealth fund. Do you know the word sovereign? Sovereign? What are we talking about when we see the word sovereign? Countries, right? So this is government-controlled investment funds. So this is important to understand international transactions, okay? because it's, it's a large amount of money. These wealth funds are from Asia, China, Japan, Korea, and Middle Eastern countries, and are responsible for recycling foreign exchange reserves of those countries swelled by trade surpluses and oil revenues. Do you do the recycling, or does your mother do the recycling? At home. Do you help your mother with the recycling? Polisigo? Hmm? Do you do recycling or not? Your mother does all the recycling? I do the recycling. You do the recycling? That's good. Right. You understand recycle? Yes. Right. So if we look at a very simple world, we have China and the US. Right? So China is buying US <coughs> bonds, lending money to the US government. Right? What is the US doing with money? What are US people doing with the money? Buying products. Buying products from China. What kind of products? Oh, everything. Everything. What kind? Give me an example. iPhone and... They make the iPhones in China, right? Made in China. Yes. Right? So we can say iPhone, right? So it's packaged, maybe packaged in the US or packaged somewhere else, right? So this is recycling. Can you see that? Yes. They buy the US government bonds, the US buys the products, they buy more bonds, they buy more products. Everybody's happy. Right? <laughs> right? Do you trust the US to pay back the money? China? Do you think there will be a lot of inflation in the US? Do you think they can pay back the money? And everybody's happy, right? <laughs> if they can't pay back the money, we could have a problem. Okay? China has a slight problem because it owns about 2 trillion US government bonds. Right? Nowadays, it's trying to diversify its assets into different things like gold and euros and other areas. Right? If you hold that much dollars, uh, you're also quite dependent on the US. So they have the China merit. Chimerica? Have you heard of Chimerica? Yeah. These days China and America has a closer relationship. Why? Do you want the dollar to suddenly get very weak? High inflation in the US? Crisis in the US? No, right? 
maybe you'll help the US if they're going to have a crisis. Is it in China's interest to help the US? China owns two trillion US dollars. Is it in their interest to help the US? Yes, is it in the US interest to help China? They're buying all their bonds, a lot of their bonds. Yes, right? So we have that kind of relationship. So who's in the middle here? Sovereign wealth fund. China has a sovereign wealth fund. This fund is buying the bonds, right? Who can we put here instead of China? Saudi Arabia. What are we going to put here? They're still buying US bonds. What are we going to put here? Buying oil, right? What about if we put Japan here? They're buying US bonds. Cars. What about if we put Korea? Electronic machine. Hmm? Electronic goods. Electronic goods. Right? Who else is buying US government bonds? They're all using their sovereign wealth fund. Yes. Who else do you think is buying US government bonds? Here we mention Asian and Middle Eastern countries, right? They are the main buyers of US uh, yes. sovereign wealth funds. Yes. Uh, US Central Bank is top holder of US government bonds. Then after that is Japan and China. Okay. So <clears throat> we can have that kind of relationship. So we should understand that the sovereign wealth fund, government controlled investment fund, help this relationship. So since 1982, the US has a continuous deficit on the current account and continuous surplus on the capital account. During the same period, Japan has experienced the opposite. Okay, so here we can see on the graph, US balance of payments, right? In 1982, it was around zero, and since that time, this blue line, this is the current account, has always been negative. So this means the U.S. are importing more than they're exporting. Negative number, right? Getting better or getting worse? Worse. What about Japan? The same more. trend, right? Yes. Japan is exporting more than it imports. What does Japan get in return? Mm, pays them interests, right? Saving. Uh, here's Japan. Oh, sorry, that was the US. This was the capital account and the cur current account, and this is the capital account. And this is Japan. So we can see Japan current account is similar, always in positive, right? Capital account going up and down in the negative position. Okay. So actually, a lot of Japanese people, they get the money. So here, if we just say the story of Japan very simply, they get the money for the imports or exports, Toyota, Sony, and so on. What do they do with the money? Do they invest it in Japan or in other countries? In Japan. What's this telling us? Other countries, right? This is negative. It means Japanese people are spending more abroad, investing more abroad, than foreigners are investing in Japan. Okay? So, uh, Japanese people buy the US government bonds, or they invest in Korea, or Vietnam, or other countries. Okay? With the money they get from there. Exports. Germany, also surplus country. Yes. Okay? From 1990 to 2001, it had a deficit. This was because of German reunification. And they needed to buy a lot of imports to rebuild East Germany. But since 2001, Germany has uh, traditionally a surplus. So we can see these are major countries. Uh, here uh, we can see US. So the different countries. This is the U.S. capital account. This is the U.S. Uh, current account. We already saw this one, right? Then the other countries, the numbers are slightly smaller. Uh, but it's opposite. Germany has a negative capital account. 
The UK, similar to the US, usually has a, a current account deficit, capital account surplus. Okay. So do you have any questions so far about balance of payments? Yes? Why is it possible that uh, why is that uh, why is that possible on the pure flexible exchange rate because we each number would balance each other file? Ah uh, yes, because in because the reserves account usually it's being used by the central bank to manage the, the currency. So China has a lot of very high reserves. That's an example, right? Why? Because China wants to keep the Chinese currency weak. weak. So it intervenes in the market. By How can it keep the Chinese currency weak? Okay? By uh, buying US dollars and selling the Chinese currency. Okay? So it intervenes in the market. That means it's going to have reserves. But the other country in the free floating exchange rate, they're not intervening in the market. Central bank is not intervening in the market. So it's not holding back reserves. Okay, so mainly this relates to countries with the managed or pegged exchange rate. So we'll talk about it when we talk about Thailand. We'll talk about a crisis in Thailand later. And we'll see how Thailand had a problem in that, in that area. Okay? So maybe that will make it a little bit clearer. But countries using their reserves to manage the exchange rate, the reserves account is more important. Okay? Countries not managing their exchange rate, reserves account is not very important. So then uh, let's finish there for today. If you have any further question, you can ask me in my office after the class. Or I'll be in my office. Have a nice weekend.